What's going on guys? So we are back. I think this is video five. I think so, right? Fifth video? We're on five. Five in this series on how Riverstone RVs are manufactured. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I've been a huge fan of Riverstones, even though they've never sponsored me, they've never paid me, they've never paid for a hotel, a flight, travel, um, you guys aren't paying me anything for this. Which You're trying to make me feel bad? I kind of am. <laughs> but I've always talked about their product in good ways because when I view them, when I film them, there are so many aspects to a Riverstone that are just impressive to me. And before you guys say every RV is trash or junk, go back, watch the first video, go through them all so you can see where we're at now and understand how Riverstone and why Riverstone does things differently. That said, we're going to continue this video showing you a really, really cool sneak preview at what's behind Nick right now, but we're not going to show it yet. And then what's going on the top of these RVs. Hang tight. I'll be right back. Okay, so Nick, what's behind you? Uh, this, this one is the first of our new caps. So they're completing the molds right now. Um, it's going to be an early 2025 change. Um, but about two weeks into the model year, we're going to be changing the cap. We have not changed our cap since 2019 model year. Okay. So along with that, we're going to have some new paint schemes. I might just be able to find one of those around here for you too. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to know what a front cap looks like before it's been installed, and it's primered before it gets its paint. Once you get this finalized and you get it exactly the way you want, you send it back to the manufacturer, they're gonna send it to you painted, right? Well, for our full body paint units, it's gonna come in gray. That's our lines full oh, gray okay. caps right now. Now we will have for our decal packages a painted version of this as well, so we'll order them each way. There's no point in paying to paint that cap twice. That's right? true, absolutely. So a cool thing we're doing this year, we're doing recessed lights with uh, diffused lenses over top of them. So instead of your rope lights or yeah LED it'll lights be kind, kind of, of a... sticking out it's going to be more of a slim uh slim line look the lenses are going to be very automotive yeah. yeah that's cool so. all right so this video is a very special video because we are going to be talking about something that is very important to anybody who owns an rv and that is the roof so up there is a giant roll of fiberglass now a lot of people might be under the impression that when they see an rv that claims to have a fiberglass one-piece roof it's not truly like hard marine boat hull fiberglass. It's a roll of fiberglass, but it's really thick and strong. So Nick, I'm gonna let you take it over from here and explain what's going on. Correct, so it's honestly a lot of the products, um, well, our fiberglass always has a backer on the sidewalls too, right? So just like you were talking about how strong it is compared to like a boat fiberglass, it's not a one piece hull. It's not a molded fiberglass roof like you're gonna see on some of the high, real high end motorized. It's gonna be similar to uh, more of your volume class A products or class C products. It is a fiberglass roof. It's a superior product. It's going to hold up. When you look a lot of fiberglass walls for RVs, they're made off a of fiberglass roll like this. They unroll them and they laminate it. So what we're doing is 3 8 plywood decking, and then we're taking this fiberglass and gluing it to that plywood decking. It's going to be a stronger product. It's easier for repairability, and uh, you get some better paint adhesion to it as well. Um, it's thicker too. It's a lot thicker than your traditional. It is a lot thicker. Yeah, rubber well. membrane. So your your regular roofs, no matter what the membrane is, they have, you know, extensive warranties and they are repairable. They are patchable, but it's not the same as a fiberglass roof. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is always considered a premium product over your traditional, and that's cool. And is this going to be a standard thing, or is this going to be standard an option across the board? So that's one thing, we are a production facility. I know I talk about our lower volume, but some of those items, um, it's unrealistic, or it's, you have to change your production so much to change roof material. I mean, you look at how we're doing a roll and bringing it across, I'm gonna have to swap that roll or have a second roof station if I wanna go back and forth between a tough yeah. flex or a TPO um, style roof. So this so. just benefits everybody because you don't want to have to order two different, three different materials. And at the same time, the the labor portion of actually installing it, you streamline by just staying with one material. 100%. And that's when we're looking at some of those cost analysis and what we think the benefit analysis is on something like that. You know, there's some items it's easy. 
Um, you say, oh, let's try it as an option. And then it becomes heat pumps on the ACs we talked about in one of the other videos. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you get so many of them getting multiple heat pumps, you say, hey, it's easier. Let's just order one AC with heat pumps, and it's worth the money. Uh, something like a roof, it's unrealistic to say, hey, let's make that an option. Yeah, that's you know? true. That makes sense. Perfect sense. Over here, we have a unit that is near completion. This will be a full body paint unit, right? Yes, and that's why you're going to see some mismatched skirt metal. Um, you know, when we do a decal unit, I, I don't know if we have one down line or not. I think it came offline already. We do a decal unit. We do all the skirt metal, uh, most of your trims, all the match. When we do a painted unit, you're going to see primer gray walls, mismatched uh, skirt metal. The key for us is that it's the 040 skirt metal, a little heavier duty skirt metal. Most of our production, um, over 85% of it is going to be full body paint. Yep. So, now, clarify for people, we've brought this up in every video we've ever made filming Riverstones at the dealer open house, uh, whenever I see them at dealership lots. Let's go over here, Nick, because this is an important part. Full body paint to a lot of people means that every aspect of the RV is painted, I guess, except the roof and the belly. Yeah. So they're like, if this part of the slide out doesn't match this part of the slide, it's not full body paint. And that's totally inaccurate. However, you do paint the sides of your slide outs. Yes. So we do paint the sides of our slides. We do not paint the stripes through them. Um, there are very few products in the industry, period, that do that. But we paint whatever the base color of our paint job is. That's what the side of the slide's getting painted. So right now it's a little bit of an off-white. It's the Riverstone Ice is the term everyone uses for that color, all of our suppliers. Um, but we'll paint that to match whatever the paint scheme is. Very good. And you said all dual pane windows. Yes. Which is really nice. And they are super effective. I made a full video. Did you see the video I made on that? You might not have. I don't think so. So I actually took, because a lot of people say, like, the R value of a dual pane window is, like, 1. 1.5. It's like hardly anything compared to a single pane. So I have a surveyor, which has single pane windows, and I have a coachman Brookstone, which has dual pane windows, these same dual pane windows. And whenever we were collaborating to make this Brookstone, I was told by the, the GM over there that not only are they stupid heavy, they're insanely expensive for a true dual pane window for an RV. And then there was another video by another YouTube creator that said laminated glass windows where people think they're dual pane, but it's just two pieces of glass that are glued together. And I hadn't seen those before, but I guess that's also a, a thing that exists. But true dual pane windows, a lot of people are like, well, you get no R value out of it. So I actually did a test. I took a heat gun and I put a heat gun to the window and took a thermometer reading, a digital thermometer reading or temperature reading of the outside of the glass and the inside of the glass on testing it. And the dual pane window, after holding a heat gun to it for like 20 seconds at high setting, transmitted like a, a three degree difference in temperature to the inside. It was insane. But the single pane window matched the outside temperature. So it was like a 50 degree increase from the outside and inside. And all that heat radiates inside. It is absolutely 100% worth it to have dual pane windows on your RV. True dual pane windows. You know... A thing a lot of people don't realize, too, is the sound. Yes. The sound of having that two panes of glass with the separation in between, right? So our three-inch wall, the dual-pane windows, makes a huge difference when it comes to um, your insulation. It also makes a big difference when it comes to the noise from outside getting inside of the unit. Yeah, so. absolutely. And that I can attest to that as well. And I think most people say that first and foremost. Whether they're a fan of them or not, if they have them, they're like, it's significantly quieter. Which it is. It's two pieces of glass with an air gap in between them versus one. And we did prove that there was an air gap. I actually showed people the spacing, that there's a true air gap in between the two panes. Mm -hmm. But temperature-wise, it makes all the difference in the world. It makes a difference if you have the sun hitting that side, touching the window, and it burning your hand versus it feeling like the inside of your RV. It's a big, big, big difference. Well, in the colder temperatures, you see a condensation difference as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, over time, over bumpy roads, over rough terrain, you can break that seal. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that. That seal will break, and you will possibly introduce moisture into there or dirt or other debris once that seal breaks, and that's something you also have to keep an eye on over time. Yeah, I mean, that is the negative side to them. That's really the only downside. But even then, they still offer a tremendous amount of insulation value because you're creating an air gap to block that hot transfer, that heat transfer from radiating in just seamlessly. 
Okay, so one thing that's very synonymous with Riverstone are these beautiful fiberglass caps on the back. These will be full body painted, and that really nice kind of Class A diesel pusher LED light system back here. They just look absolutely massive, and they look like you're behind a motor coach. I mean, they're just beautiful back here. And the only unit, correct me if I'm wrong, that does not put a fiberglass cap on the back is the one with the big pull-out drawer. Yeah, right. which anymore is a, a handful of floor yeah. plans. But yeah, if it has the big pull-out drawer, or obviously if it has a ramp door in the rear. But yeah. Okay. Now we are going to head up to the cabinetry area. Um, so this is where our slide-out cabinets are built. It's also where our ACs are installed. So I want to get you a good look at what that fiberglass roof looks like. Ooh, so these are the Penguin 2 ACs with heat pumps. These are not low-cost ACs. These are low-profile but they're also about the most expensive in the industry. I was say high cost. <laughs> yeah, these are probably the most expensive AC unit you can get for an RV. Watch your feet on my box connector. These are the same units that a lot of Class A diesel pushers put and kind of recess into the roof on their units. But you can see how nice of a finished product that roof gives you. Um, we can take a look at it at the other end of the mezzanine um, once the ACs are installed. That gives you an idea how clean things are um, on a oh, yeah. roof. How much, uh, how much solar are you putting on these? So the stand is a 200 watt panel. Part of our legacy package this year is 600 watts. So you get an additional two, uh, two 200 watt panels. Okay. That's gonna be paired with the 2000 watt inverter and a 30 amp MPPT controller and a 100, uh, 100 amp hour lithium battery. Oh, so, so you're putting the lithium battery in as well. Just starting that in 25s, yep. Man, you have a lot of real estate up there to add more solar if you want to. Yes, you do. <laughs> there are some folks who have gone crazy with river stones and solar as well, where the whole thing, it looks like a living vehicle, if you've ever seen those videos of uh, the $850,000 travel trailer. But the whole roof is solar panels, and boy, you could put a lot of solar panels up here. So let's swing around to the other side real quick. So this specific unit is going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 AC units will be on top of this RV right here. They got them all lined up. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah. They'll freeze you out. This is going to be a meat locker unit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This will be sold to the USDA. <laughs> this is cool. This is cool. So that's the fiberglass roof. All of these have the fiberglass roof. It looks so clean too. And what's really interesting, and this goes to the point of how, how much thicker it is, you don't see any imprinting of the wood underneath it at all. I mean, that's a big reason to go to it. Um, you know, honestly, we don't have issues with the other roofs. Again, it's a perception thing. It is a high quality product. I'm not going to say it's not higher quality. We didn't have issues with other roofs. It's just something we've been looking at for a while. and We thought this was the right year to make the switch. Um, and that's one of the big things. You don't see any imprinting anything underneath. You don't see the cove on the outside that's creating that corner. Um, you don't see any of the plywood. Yeah, this is just a really nice finished off product. One of the nice things about what we're doing here today as well is the fact that this is their normal production. None of this has been staged. None of this has been set up for videoing. This is just their normal production. I literally called him and told him I'm going to be in Indiana. I want to swing by there. And he said, yeah, just let me know when you're here. I'll let you in. And I happened to come by in the evening. But it looks nice. It looks great. I mean, this is absolutely awesome. And a testimony to things is you could have gone with the cheaper AC unit. Mm -hmm. You could have gone with the cheaper, taller profile AC unit. You could have gone with one without heat pumps or just a cheaper unit in general. There's mm -hmm. tons of brands available now. But you guys are going with this specific, the Penguin 2, low profile with heat pump 15K. Again, these are typically what you would see on like a Class A diesel pusher, a big, big million dollar motor coach. It's yeah. the same AC unit. Yeah, I mean, it's really, we feel one of the, if not the nicest AC in the market. It's low profile, it's efficient, it's quieter than your traditional ACs, and our customers seem to love the triple heat pumps as well that we're doing now, so. That's very cool. So before we head down, one other thing I'm noticing, and this is something that I really like about Riverstone in general, is it, you put features that a lot of people typically would have to go out and install themselves on lower end units. Mm -hmm. And one thing I had noticed is you have not just the Max Air fans, but you put a cover on that is probably the most expensive aftermarket cover you could add because it's low profile and the seal it creates when you're done. It's not that big gaudy one that sticks up like a foot off of the top of the RV. No, it actually moves up and down with the fan as it opens. It, it moves up and down with the lid of the fan. Um, 
So normally you would have a fan lid that opens up underneath that big, giant, oversized cover. Um, so they're the slimline ones. We're also doing them in every bathroom, half bath, and in the kitchen of every unit. So our microwaves in any floor plan, the microwave is on an exterior wall, does actually vent through the wall to the exterior, but we've gone ahead and added a max air fan as well. For that customer, cooking with LP stoves creates more humidity. LP heat creates more humidity. For the customer that's gonna be somewhere and they're cooking meals in it, they're boiling pasta, they're creating a lot of steam, a lot of condensation, yep. we want a great way for them to be able to get that outside of the unit. And that's so. huge. And I'm gonna make a full video on that, if not before this video airs, talking about humidity in an RV, because people do not realize when you have one of these units, doesn't matter what brand it is, doesn't matter how expensive it is, sitting inside of a storage facility in a hot, humid climate environment, just like a home, mold is gonna form, adhesives will start freeing themselves up, wood will start expanding or contracting, you're gonna have problems. You have to control humidity inside of your RV, especially when it's in storage. Well, in that TVC, every unit we do uh, two attic vents as well. So you see the small, I call them mushroom caps, but the three inch mm -hmm. vents, those are for your vent pipes for your tanks. The wider ones, those are actually just attic vents. So they're just going through the plywood oh, wow. down into the attic. We do them in the center down that channel because that's where you have the most ability for the air to flow. Is in yeah, the hot air is going to rise too, yeah. Yep. So That is really cool. That's very thoughtful, and I don't think I've seen anybody do that before. Yeah, it's something, you know, I, I think some guys over at different points in time have done it, but it's something we feel for the amount of use our units get, you need it. Right, you're not gonna. What roof in a normal building do you not have the attic vented? Yeah, right? that's true. It's we code. don't have soffits yeah. running around the outside. Absolutely, <laughs> very cool. Okay, so we are away from the AC portion now. These are valances. Now, love them or hate them. Some people hate valances. Some people oh, yeah. love valances. They are something that needs to be done correctly whenever you do them. And a lot of manufacturers don't do them in a way that will truly last. What's the benefit of the process you guys do for a valance? So you see it's a solid, it's hardwood, pocket screwed together valance. This insert area, we actually take a piece of glass. That's what these center pieces are. So they're mirrored with, uh, uh, they have a mirror film on them so you can't see through them, but it's an actual glass insert. Yeah. And then we're taking a day-night shade and mounting it inside of that valance. Ooh, that's a high valance. quality day-night shade too. Yeah, it's a slow rise. Yeah, this is really nice. The The day-night roller shades I typically see aren't this robust. They're, it's like a smaller unit. That's actually really nice. And here's a great thing at our production volume allows us to get a little more creative in our floor plans with what we can use. People don't think about it a lot of times. You go, why don't you use a, a different size window here? Because it makes more sense. When you, Every time you change a window size, you change a valance size, you change a glass size, you change your blind size. Yeah, that's true. Then we do trim underneath the window. It changes the trim piece under the window. Changes the window sill under the window. Um, you know, we have a lot of window sizes. I'm not trying to make an excuse mm -hmm. for us. But the higher volume are you are, the more of each of those pieces you have to stock in each size. Yeah. So that's one place there. Cabinet doors, drawer fronts, those type of finish items where you look and you'll see a lot more aesthetic lines in a lot of our units and some of the higher volume pieces. That's why. You don't realize that little change what all impacts it also everything changes. else yeah. and you know what's interesting one thing that you have not mentioned whenever we've talked about these changes you've never said well it adds all this weight the reality is, yeah. is you guys don't focus as much on weight as companies mm -hmm. who build lighter weight rvs who focus yeah. so much on it for that the three-quarter ton and the one ton single rear wheel truck market that we talked about earlier you fully expect and you've, you've mentioned this i'm not just putting words in your mouth but you fully expect a riverstone owner to have a dually mm-hmm for the the one floor plan we get quite a few people without is our 39 R KFP. And it's a 3,000 pound hitch weight, and it's a low 16 dry weight, depending mm -hmm. on how you equip it. So it's about a, it's a 19,085 pound GVW. Weight. Okay, so if you so have a properly equipped, a yep. Properly if, equipped, single rear wheel. Other than that, we're pretty much dualies. We have a lot of people to pull them with semis. Yeah, yep, medium you know? duty and up. Yeah. Very cool. Anyways, we're gonna wrap this video up. Next video, is gonna be over there looking at some finished units. So these units, I'm assuming you're going through your PDI before they leave the facility and go to the holding area for pickup by uh, hotshot drivers. Take them where they go. Pretty much, yeah, right. I'll show you. It's a little bit part of the paint process as well. Okay, and uh, yeah, a lot of these have to actually go to get painted first because they don't paint them in here. 
Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, go back, watch the other videos, and then uh, watch this video and then the next video because the next video is going to show you a completed unit. Um, we might even take a real quick look at the cabinet shop to show you the new technology or the new features in their drawers. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again very soon.